Welcome to my channel for the Hindu editorial analysis of August 24. If you like my video, do hit the like button, subscribe my channel and also give your opinion about the video. And guys, if you look at today's article, there was an article on NEET. So, we'll discuss this article in detail with the background. And then the next article is two cheers for the Supreme Court. This article is all about the triple talaq verdict. And even we'll have a look at this article in detail. Plus, a bit of critic. Even this article is important. It is about the bilateral investment treaty. So, it tries to talk about Sri Krishna committee recommendation. So, even we'll have a look at this article and these two articles are not important for today and even this article is all about uh, president trump's administration policy with with respect to afghan so this article is not of much importance so we will look these three articles in detail for to find so let's move to the article so coming to the background first see the neat examination was introduced in the year 2013 and when the neat examination was introduced the supreme court held that this neat examination is unconstitutional however a review petition was again filed in supreme court and the supreme court gave a verdict that this neat examination should be conducted all over india in 2016 but however there were different opinion with many states where many states were in opinion that this neat examination is an infringement into their education system that is many states have a state board system of education or a matriculation system of education where they have a separate admission process into the medical colleges so bringing in these sort of examination is an infringement into their education rights plus even many states argued that bringing in these sort of examinations could affect the rural background students a lot we saw that many states have state board system of education and many rural students used to study this state board education so bringing in a competitive examination is not a level playing field according to many states so what happened is the central government passed an ordinance where it gave an exemption of 1 year for this neat examination see this 1 year was given as an exemption for the states where they could improve the quality of education and to prepare students for this examination however this is not the case with respect to tamil nadu recently the neat examination was conducted and the tamil nadu government passed an ordinance in their state legislative assembly which advocated for 85 percentage of these seats for the state board students that is those students from the state of tamil nadu and those who are from the state board education system and the rest 15 percentage seats would be allocated to cbse background students by having a pan india basis so one could notice here it is the quota of 85 percentage of seats for the state board students and this was not acceptable for the center however with the political influence the union law ministry gave approval to this ordinance but the center has disapproved it and because of this a appeal was made in the supreme court towards this disapproval and the supreme court has recently turned down this appeal advocating for the neat examination stating that admissions should be on the basis of neat examination fine and this article is related to that and coming to the article the article mentions it is a matter of immense relief that a prolonged uncertainty over the medical admission process in tamil nadu is over and this entire process has been marked with anxiety for students as well as parents but however this phase is ended and at the same time it has brought in few lessons for the state government to look upon plus the article mentions the state governments couldn't able to introduce legislative measures at the same time they didn't even get the favorable judicial orders to exempt from this neat examination as the supreme court says this neat must be the sole basis for the medical examinations across the country tamil nadu had to release the merit list for the mbbs students based on this neat ranking however the supreme court gave uh, some sort of a direction to the states to complete the admission process by september 4 and also mentions this direction is after a vault phase by the center which had previously cleared an ordinance prepared by the state government to grant one year exemption from the neat see we saw in the background where i told you that the law ministry due to political influence gave one year exemption for the state government by approving the ordinance passed by the tamil nadu legislative assembly so that's what this article mentions even the center has informed the court that it was not in favor of giving undue advantage to one single state as the article mentions it was apparent that it was well known that these sort of ordinances would run into a judicial barrier and the supreme court could take a view of this sort of legislation which gives exemption to a single state so the article mentions even last year when the central government passed an ordinance which gave exemption for one year see we saw it in the background that when the supreme court asked that neat examination should be conducted in 2016 
in pan india basis however the center passed an ordinance against it so this article mentions even the supreme court had made its displeasure obvious with these sort of actions last year and against this backdrop it is valid that the center made a u turn which seems to be a political exercise plus the article also say the tamil nadu assembly had passed two bills to exempt the state from the neat examination permanently and it was given to the center for the president assent and when they assent did not come they have advised the students to get ready for the neat but however during the admission season it made a controversial order in the form of ordinance you are marking 85 percentage of medical seats for the state board student and it was struck down by the court see it was struck down by the madras high court and even though there is a restriction on these sort of ordinance the state government continued their efforts to get an exemption and however the article blames that the state government has failed to admit its own failure to make the changes in the school curriculum to make students neat ready so this was the failure of the state government but rather than bringing in reforms into their education system the state government went for this sort of action which is controversial so the article mentioned whether in the interest of uniform admission norms or even a syllabus which is not familiar to the majority of its students especially the rural students even though with this prevailing disadvantages in the neat examination there may be a no scope for exemption because it happens to be a sole admission gate for this medical examination and one state could not be exemption to this so the solution for the tamil nadu is they have to upgrade their academic standards and the center could help them by drawing up of a fresh syllabus standard for neat with the consultation of the states so that they could increase their educational standards fine so that's it with respect to this article see guys this article tries to brings in the scenario with respect to neat examination and it tries to be factual in nature with the things that has happened and with respect to this article you can use this article in judicial interventions or judicial activism and you can also use this article with respect to the misuse of ordinance and even this article can be used in the shortcomings of our educational system or with respect to educational infrastructure which is pre- prevailing in india fine so that's it with respect to this article we'll move on to the next article now and coming to the next article two cheers for the supreme court see guys this article is against the supreme court verdict We saw yesterday that the Supreme Court held triple talaq unconstitutional, and this article is against that verdict, where it tries to gives its own opinion. And what I want you to do is please refer yesterday video and then come to this in order to understand this concept better. Fine. So coming to the article, the article mentions on November 1948, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar addressed the Constituent Assembly and proudly stated that the Constitution has adopted individual as its unit. See, we even tell that we, the people of India, have resolved ourselves. to give this constitution to ourselves so even in preamble we have mentioned that the constitution is framed by we the people so it is the individual which is the basic unit of this constitution but the article mentions the constitution vision is under attack and it is because of this supreme court verdict and it also tries to brings out the verdict of chief justice j s kekar saying that he is the only judge out of a bench of 5 supported towards the religious freedom see even yesterday we saw that justice kekar was in the opinion that it is not upon the court to accept an egalitarian approach over a practice which constitutes an integral part of religion so what does it mean is it is not the supreme court who can decide what is faith and what is religion it is the work of others it is the work of elite personalities or elite religion personality so it is the work of them and it is not upon the supreme court to have a stance on it fine and even this article mentions out of five judges two were favoring triple talaq and had the chief justice had managed to persuade one more judge then we could have seen a different result and we could have found ourselves living under a constitution that sanctions an individual claims to manage its own religious affairs so here the point is it says that supreme court verdict against triple talaq is something which is infringement into their religious affair which the supreme court shouldn't have done fine and this article also mentions even the basic constitution values have been taken for granted and this article also tries to talks an other way around saying that okay even if you take that the opinion of three judges invalidating this triple talaq that is talaqi bidat gave us something to cheer about that is it brought in a significant victory that is the result of many decades of struggle by the muslim women which is a movement for gender justice okay there is something for us to cheer about from this judgment there is something that must be welcome however the value of a supreme court judgment is not about what it, it decide but also one should take in consideration that what all the 
possibilities and avenues it opens for the future for further progressive oriented litigation see we could sense that this triple talaq is unconstitutional okay fine but this verdict does not end here the verdict should have included a benchmark for the future litigation and if you considered in in this dimension then this verdict is failure according to this article because the opinions are narrow and even it has avoided constitutional questions which is very crucial plus this article tries to mentions the other verdicts of judges saying that justice rohinton f nariman held that in 1937 the muslim personal law that is the shariat application act has codified all muslims personal law including the triple talaq so a triple talaq is a muslim personal law according to the 1937 shariat act and with respect to it it is within the limits of constitution but the supreme court majority judgment was in the opinion that this talaqi bid allows a power to muslim husbands to divorce their wife without any scope of reconciliation so it is arbitrary and it fails to ensures article 14 of the indian constitution which is equality before law so therefore this this triple talaq is unconstitutional so this was the verdict of supreme court with respect to the triple talaq however the author argues that they have avoided a major issue and the major issue is that this personal law that is the law which we saw the muslim shariat law or the muslim personal law have been given a statutory form under our constitution see it is not only this act even the hindu marriage act is subject to a constitution however the uncodified personal law is exempted from this constitutional scrutiny see what the article mention is if any act of any religion is codified as a law or is codified as a personal law then it can be subjected to judicial scrutiny or constitutional scrutiny but at the same time what if the practice which is prevailing and it does not have a codified law for that i hope you got my point plus the article tries to says that the basic unit of the constitution as ambedkar said is the individual and the privilege which the supreme court has given over individual rights is against the vision fine and even this article mentions the verdict of mr justice kori Joseph, where he was in opinion with its simple terms, saying that talaq e bidat found no mention in the Quran and it is no part of Muslim personal law. So he decided that this talaq e bidat was un-Islamic instead of unconstitutional, which puts in a question whether court can adjudicate these sort of questions. And says this opinion is very narrow and theological. And however, there was no opinion with respect to the gender discrimination or with respect to the intersection of personal law and constitution. They were just in the opinion. opinion that this triple talaq is, is unconstitutional fine so this brings us to a discussion over the freedom of religion versus personal law which could prevail over the other or even a question that the opinion which the community have as privileges can sustain over individual constitutional right so this is a question which the article tries to puts in and says it could have a bigger debate so the article tries to brings in the verdict and sayings of ambedkar saying that there are many religious conceptions in this country. and it is so vast that they cover each and every aspect of life from birth to death and if every single personal law is to be saved then in social matters there will be a standstill and it is not possible to accept a position of that sort see it is not only with respect to the islamic religion even in hindu religion we have many concepts from a life to birth and questioning each and everything is not possible and if one does that then the society will come to a standstill so the art Article tries tries to be overrageous, saying that there is nothing extraordinary in saying that if we year after try to limit the definition of religion in such a manner that we will not extend our belief and rituals which is connected to ceremonials. which are essentially religious so even a law could be come with respect to ceremonials and defining each and every part of religion so the article mentions ultimately what separates religious norms with the personal law system is an agreement is the simple issue of consent so this is why chief justice have combined the religious freedom and personal law is found to be misguided by the author because the author feels he took constitutional provisions that has been designed to protect an individual for his faith from state inter- fairness plus the article mentions muslim women challenging the triple talaq bought in a view of constitution because there is no equivalent or parallelism within their personal law system so it is something like you don't have a personal law for yourself or you don't have a personal
personal parallel law for yourself then go to parliament and the constitution has nothing parallel for you rather than saying unconstitutional so that's it with respect to this article see guys this article is just an opinion based article with respect to the supreme court judgment and the points which you can take from this is there is no parallel personal law which is available plus the supreme court should not interfere into the personal law matters because if one interferes into personal law then it could bring society to a standstill plus ambedkar has mentioned individual as a basic unit of the constitution and going against a personal religion law is against constitution according to this article fine so these are the main shortcomings which could be inferred from the article and guys with respect to upsc examination you will not get a direct question from triple talaq or upsc will not ask you what is triple talaq and why it should be banned rather upsc will ask you question in such a manner that it will bring in a full dimension for example it could ask you question with respect to fundamental rights with respect to freedom of religion that is it could say that the fundamental right and the freedom to manage our own religious affair should go hand in hand whether this is the scenario which is prevailing in india bring out with suitable example so this could be a possible question where it will ask you to bring in the dimensions of other religion also for example you could also add a point that the supreme court has also gave a verdict that santara in jainism is also unconstitutional see santara happens to be a phenomenon in jainism where a person fast to death or until his death so even this could be one dimension to add points with respect to freedom of religion and if you know more points with respect to this please write it in the comment fine so that's it with respect to this article coming to the next article a bit of critic see here the bit refers to bilateral investment treaty so before going into this agreement we'll just look at the background see generally a bilateral investment treaty is an agreement between two nations and what they will do here is they will frame rules they will frame terms and conditions they will bring in regulations for the private investment and this bilateral investment treaty is also called as foreign direct investment so it is all about to increase trade agreement between nations which are generally signed like trade deals where a private investment can flow in in the form of fdi and this bilateral investment treaty will lead to custom union a comprehensive economic cooperation between nations even it may lead to free trade agreement between nations so this bilateral investment treaty is an initial step for a better cooperation in the future fine so coming to the article so this article mentions recently justice b n sri krishna committee has been constituted to prepare a road map to make india a hub of international arbitration see here the international arbitration refers to a similar thing like a court litigation but instead of taking place in a domestic court it will bring out consensus by private adjudicators fine these private adjudicators are known as arbitrator fine so this committee was appointed to make india a hub for international arbitration and this committee has also recommended many changes in indian arbitration law and also recommended that they have to promote an institutional mechanism to bring in more arbitration in india see this arbitration recommendation is very important because many bilateral investment treaty between nations that is between india and other nations are currently in disputes that is this article mentions nearly about india has dispute with nearly 20 and these recommendations could help to bring down this disputes fine so this article tries to talks about the recommendation so first it talks about the dispute management telling that for better management of bit disputes the sri krishna committee recommended that one has to create an inter ministerial committee so the inter ministerial committee should consist of officials from ministry of finance external affairs and law plus hiring of external lawyers who have experience and expertise in these bits so that to boost the government legal scene plus it also advocated for creation of an designated fund plus an appointment of a council to defend india against bit claims and boosting the capacity of central and state government to understand the implication of policy decision that is on bit obligation that is one need to analyze their policies and the impact of the policies which could help them in better future policy make and the most significant recommendation is the creation of a post of an international law advisor so here they have recommended the inter national law advisor to advise the government on international law disputes particularly this bit dispute plus he will be responsible for day to day management of this bit arbitration so here the intent is clear cut that is they want to make a single authority to do to deal with all bit arbitration that is this international law advisor will manage the disputes and will be responsible for the day to day management of this arbitration so the article mentions this recommendation will amount to duplicate the existing 
arrangement to offer advice on international law including bits to the government see we already have the sort of international law advisor for us so this recommendation is just an duplicate of the present agreement so the article mentions the legal and treaty division of the external affairs ministry is mandated to offer legal advice to the government on the international law matters including bit arbitration so we already have a division in the external affairs that is legal and treaty division so instead of creating a new office the lnt could be strengthened fine plus the article mentions this lnt divisions could be made to design an authority to deal with this bit arbitration plus they can act as a coordinator to the proposed imc that is inter ministerial committee so the ministry will deal with all the trade agreements plus this lnt could deal with the arbitration mechanism plus with respect to the dispute resolution the committee has made some useful recommendations such as mentioning about the possibility of existing bit appellate mechanism and multilateral investment court however its conclusion that the investment state dispute settlement mechanism which is given in the article 15 of the indian model bit provides for an effective mechanism for settling for settling bit disputes between investor and the state and this is problematic according to the article see this investor state dispute settlement is a system through which an individual company can sue countries for discriminatory practices i can give you an example for this say for example we have a bilateral investment treaty with us and us is bringing in fdi in pharmaceutical however the government makes a rule that the prices of drug cannot be more than rupees 100 take for example the cancer drug so the prices of the cancer drug cannot be more than rupees 100 so this happens to be a discriminatory policy against the pharmaceutical company so here the pharmaceutical company can sue the government because it is not investor friendly so this is investor state dispute settlement mechanism and but bringing in this mechanism will affect the pharmaceutical sector a lot fine plus the article also mentioned that article 15 of the indian model bilateral investment treaty provides for a foreign investor to lit litigate in domestic court for a period of 5 years see in the crux it has given many points in the crux what what does it try to say is the investors has a window of only 3 months to submit a dispute for this bit arbitration and which is a strict mechanism which dilute the effectiveness of investor state dispute settlement mechanism fine so this article 15 is not in respect to this investor state dispute settlement mechanism plus the article mentions indian model bilateral investment treaty also have many restrictions and many jurisdictional limitations in article 13 which also limit the usefulness of isds plus the isds mechanism in india and indian model with respect to this isds mechanism is covering issues such as appointment transparency awards review so these sort of things are not much efficient with respect to isds mechanism because isds is a mechanism where i told you before it's an dispute settlement mechanism through arbitration means where the foreign companies or the foreign investors will be having a better stance for themselves so the indian law with respect to this isds mechanism is a worrisome according to the article so the article mentions bilateral investment treaty arbitration as three aspects in itself one is jurisdictional that is defining investment and the second one is substantive that is expropriation see it's like taking the property of others fine so this is a substantive means and the other one is procedural thing that is the mechanism which should be followed for dispute settlement so these three aspects are important with respect to bit arbitration and the article mentions the committee should focus on these three aspects but this sri krishna committee has narrowed down to only procedural aspect so which is surprising that even though a conference was held based on this this committee has given such sort of recommendation so the article mentions the committee recommendation and explanation require a greater debate so one could see that this committee recommendation is being pro state rather than for the investors that is pro investors fine so that's it with respect to this article see guys you can write this articles if at all a question of investment or fdi comes into play where you could tell that even sri krishna committee has given its recommendation with respect to it so you can write this example if at all such questions on fdi comes into play or any investment treaty comes into play fine so that's it with respect to the sari